chapter three, as was mentioned in the Slack, is about uh, the built-in data structures, files, and functions. And these are in the, say, the, the underlying uh, um, uh, core Python. So what we're gonna talk about today, I, and I, I suppose we could think of them as learning objectives. Um, in, in terms of data structures, we're going to cover tuples, lists, uh, dictionaries and sets. Um, there's some sequence functions that relate to those data types. There's comprehensions and, and of course, nested lists. Uh, after that, we'll get to uh, functions and some comments about namespacing, uh, returning multiple value, values from functions and, and even a short comment about uh, anonymous or Lambda functions. Uh, we'll talk about generators just briefly to, to iterate across those lists, some comments on errors and exceptions, and then a quick blurb on uh, files and operating system. So we've got a little less than an hour to walk through, um, I guess, these, these are kind of foundational stuff, um, kind of things we need to know before we, we dive into the, the data analysis pieces. So back at the top, um, a tuple in Python um, is, uh, is an entity in memory that is uh, ordered, um, it's, it's created often with parentheses or not parentheses, and the, the position of each of those pieces of data in the tuple is, is retained. The, the first position is slot zero, the second position is slot one, two, and, and three, kind of famously. Uh, tuples are unchangeable, or at least the, the tuple part is unchangeable. It may contain a list or things that are changeable, but, but the tuple is unchangeable. Uh, obviously, from this example, uh, a tuple can be heterogeneous, so it can have strings and floats and integers and even uh, nested structures. And tuples certainly can contain duplicates in, in those slots. Um, in the book, they say this is noted, so it, it is a fixed length item and, and immutable. Uh, once it's assigned, uh, like in this example, four, five, and six, uh, this by itself can't be changed. The easiest way to make one is, is just to um, assign it like I did here, and I wrote it out, and it prints back out what I put in. Um, they note that in many contexts, the parentheses can be omitted, or it's, it's just implied. I, it may be confusing if you rely on the parentheses to tell you what it is. Um, they note that you can convert really anything else to a tuple by wrapping it in parentheses. So we'll cover lists in a minute, but uh, you can wrap a list in, in the tuple callout, or, or in this case, we're, we're going to tuple uh, a string. It's, it's funny to me how a tuple of the string is actually zero position S, one position T, third position R. So it's individual characters in those slots. Uh, when you have a tuple like TUP here, you can access the thing in, the, in that memory slot with square brackets. So uh, TUP zero grabs the first slot of the word string. You can have tuples of tuples, they nest. Um, so, so this one implies that there's parentheses on the outside. So in the first slot is four, five, six, and in the second slot is seven, eight. Um, so I say first slot, but it's really the zeroth slot. And also then the, the, the first slot is is seven, eight. Um, so as I noted before, um, 
while the object stored in a tuple might be mutable, so this 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 list thing in the middle is changeable, but the 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 thing on the outside, the tuple itself, is not modifiable. So in this case, um, the item in position two, so zero one two, the the item in position two is is true. If I try to assign faults to the thing in the second position, uh, I get unhappy Python. It gives me an error back. Um, you can't you can't change the tuple. But to make it a point, uh, if if an object inside the tuple is mutable, like this uh, this list element in position one. Um, you can modify the list in place. So we'll see in a moment that tuple, the item in position one, because it's a list, there's this append method, and we can add the number three to append to the list in the middle of the tuple. Uh, another feature with tuples, you can concatenate them using a plus operator to produce longer tuples. Um, so there's a tuple, a second tuple, and a third tuple, and they, they, they concatenate on top of one another into another tuple. Um, all right, so if you try to assign a tuple-like expression of variables, uh, Python will attempt to unpack the value on the right hand of the equal sign. So, um, I <laughs> actually what we're talking about here is 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 down here. So tup is four, five, and six. If if I put on the left abc equals this this thing on the right is four, five, and six. So c is six. So so. It it literally has allowed us to um, to to unpack or unroll the 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 tuple and then pick out the value of of just the C element. Even sequences with nested tuples can be unpacked. So uh, this tuple has a four in the or in the zeroth position, a five in the first position, and six and seven in the in the third position. And, and it's possible to get the D out of there um, with, with this notation of, of uh, you know, the variables on the left. So since you can do this, you can also easily swap variable names in tuples. If A and B is one and four, then by saying B and A is A and B, then the, the new B is one and the new A is four. Um, Wes notes here that a common use of variable unpacking is, is iterating over the sequences of, of tuples or we'll get to lists in a, in a second. So if we have a sequence that's a tuple, a tuple, and a tuple within a within a list, then then we can say for a, b, and c in that sequence, print, um, and we'll get to this notation in the middle. But um, that a equals what's in that slot, b equals what's in this slot, and c equals in what's this what's in this slot. So the the, the printout is in this format. Okay, um, can also use this. Um, I, I, it, I don't know if it's an operator or a method, um, but you can also use that syntax for, for plucking the rest of the elements together. So if we have a tuple that is a sequence of values and pulled out A, B, and then the rest, um, in this case, rest is 
the, the three values on the right. Uh, West notes as a matter of convention. Oops, did we lose Jim? I think we did. I'll hope he's able to rejoin. It says, as a matter of convention, many people will use the underscore for unwanted variables. Um, and I must have typed this in wrong. I'll go back and fix that, that uh, error. I, any questions on tuples? I guess this was all um, really fast. Isabella, do you have a question? I guess the question I have is uh, since I'm new to Python, like when do does one need a tuple versus a list? Um, at least like, I don't know if R, I've never used anything like a tuple in R, so I just don't know. Um, yeah, I, I kind of suspect like like you, that when we go over to NumPy and Pandas, almost everything's a list because that's that's really a data frame. Mm -hmm. um, but but I can think in a programming environment, you know, people coming from C or Fortran, that those worlds have um, both stronger typing and uh, things in memory you can't change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and so I, I, I believe this is, is closer to, um, you know, four requirements from, from those other language spaces where you've got things in memory that, that are, are, are not changeable. Ooh. Thank you. Um, all right, I'd, I'd like to step through lists. I think this will be a little more familiar for from people who've used Excel or R or BASIC. Um, these, like data frames, um, are ordered yet. So the 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 data itself is is in a specific slot. Uh, lists are changeable, and and so we can we can modify all the elements in the lists. They're heterogeneous. So so list as shown here can have integers, texts, floats, and even uh, nested list of lists. And, and of course, duplicates are allowed in lists. So in contrast with tuples, lists vary in length. The contents can be modified. Um, and there's, there's all sorts of really um, interesting methods to apply to lists where, where tuples um, were, were very simple and efficient. Uh, lists have uh, more complexity uh, um, so we'll walk through some of the methods in, in, a, in a second. Um, to create them, uh, they're, they're, they're built with square, either square brackets or with, with the, uh, uh, I suppose the method with the method list. Um, we've actually converted a tuple to a list here. And when I ask for the Item in slot one, I get, uh, oh, okay. What I've done is I've changed the item in slot one from bar to peekaboo here. So B list comes out instead of foo bar baz, it comes out foo peekaboo baz. Um, they say lists and tuples are semantically similar you know, though tuples can't be modified. And and in certain, in many advanced functions, you could feed it a list or a tuple. Um, I guess he, here's an example of, uh, I guess a situation by using range, you you get the integers from zero to nine here, or, or you know, 10, 10 numbers. And uh, that that can be a list well, it could be a tuple as well. All right, so there's a bunch of methods. So when, when your item has a list, um, you can type a period and hit tab and you get a, a big menu of um, methods that apply to lists. Um, the first method that uh, they speak to here is append. And as you might expect, append 
adds this item to the end of the list. So now B list is four items. There's also an insert method that much like append adds an item, but it inserts it in this slot. So now it is foo red peekaboo Basdorf. Uh, West notes that insert is computationally more expensive than append. Um, there's also a, uh, so, you know, use it judiciously, but for, for really large data sets. Um, also mentions the pop method, which, which pulls an item out. So if you pop two, this, this item in the two slot gets, gets pulled out. So when you print the list again, peekaboo's gone. There's also, oh, a remove method. So I've, just for the exercise here, I appended the word foo, and then something must have gone wrong here. B list, append foo, B list, B list, remove foo. Apologies here. I didn't really even look at the output very well, but I, I think what's happened <laughs> here, it, it, it removed the first foo. Yeah, just the first one, yeah. Ah, I learned something. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, you can also do um, um, uh, true or false logic tests. So in this case, we're looking for the word dwarf in as a, as a keyword, a protected word, the word dwarf in B list, and it tells us true, it's in there. You can also use the, the keyword not to look for that word in the list. And in this case, it's false. Um, there's a whole lot of other uh, list methods. So we've, we've not covered all of them here. It's a, a, a short introduction to a little bit of list manipulation, but um, there's a pretty extensive table of list manipulation methods. Um, like tuples, uh, it's possible to use plus to concatenate a list. Um, so they, they end up in a new list. Um, but you can also use the extend method to, to do pretty much the same as the plus did. He notes again here that list concatenation by addition is expensive and uh, they prefer using extend uh, rather than, than the plus. It's also noting here that if, uh, I guess, uh, okay, for for uh, say very large operations on on lots and lots of texts, like whole books, that uh, the result on a, on a for loop using this this extend will be faster than using using the plus down here. Sorting, so lists can be sorted. Recall that lists are mutable, so we can move things around in them where we couldn't move them in tuples. So, so in a list, um, like with this A item that's a list, we can hit the period and tab and, and pull up the word sort. And A, now that it's sorted, is lowest to highest. Um, it's interesting to me that the, the sort method on lists has um, other interesting options uh, in the function. For example, there, there is a uh, key parameter in the sort method. And when we put it this way, it's actually calculating the length of each word. Uh, so like foxes is five and he is two. And it's sorting on the length of each word. And so when I, when I, now that it's sorted and hit B, it's sorted from two letters, three, three, five, and five. Um, sort has a whole bunch of other parameters, ways to, to achieve sorts. Um, the next item is uh, slicing. 
to to get a a, a, a portion of this um, list, um, you can use. Um, Well, um, the indexing operator. So this is uh, what was hard for me was realizing this is looking for item in the third to the fifth. Uh, well, not not even third to the fifth slot. This is it's these two that get yeah. printed out. It start counting from zero, so zero. Yeah. At position zero, so. Um, Python is zero base indexing. So whenever you want to do something, yeah, this is something that trips people. So it's always zero base indexing. So it starts counting from zero. So if you look at it here, we can see that uh, um, the seven here is at position four. So when we have three, it means at position four because zero, one, two, three. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it just grabs two elements. It's not, three, four, and five, inclusive. Oh, sorry, could you say that again? So why doesn't it print six? Right, that, I, that, that's where I was stuck. I, I would have expected all of those. Yeah, it uses Python also uses open intervals. For, for whatever reason, I have no idea why, but it always has used open intervals. I guess it helps when, if you start at zero it's, and you put a five, then you're definitely getting five elements. Maybe that's why, but I don't know. I don't know what the logic is. Something you just have to know, <laughs> maybe. So it's always exclusive. The five, the second element of the slice is always exclusive. It does not include element labeled five. Yeah, so yeah. So um, when you are doing the indexing, um, as uh, Ron says, um, it's not actually including the last one, um, I guess maybe. Yeah, so basically here is saying give me this um uh, the last one you have here is not included um is it what do you call it? is it like open ended or closed something like that i don't know what the yeah it's half open <laughs> i guess i don't know yeah thank you i that that was not immediately obvious so so that that helps um i i guess also in that we can we can uh, for for those two for for the items in those two slots, um, we can assign two new numbers, and so the the seven and five become six and three here. So it's, it's mutable. We we can change them. Uh, he notes that the start or the stop, and it and it doesn't include the stop. Uh, can be omitted, but in this case, sequence of blank to five. Oh, that's right. It gives zero, one, two, three, and four. So it did not include the five slot item. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, this is not, I think maybe later on he will explain. Um, this is not the general case. Um, so sometimes you can see like um, the way it is like the first one is the start um, or oh, the second one is the stop and the third one is the increment. I mean, the oh, right. The the so here by default is one. So we are jumping from next next one is one. So we can have like um, um, I think maybe he explained later in the book, right in the chapter. I don't know. But um, um, yeah. We'll touch just ever so slightly in generators on this, but okay. you're right. Okay. I, I think it, it comes up uh, in later chapters. Okay. Very good. Okay, and then uh, here again, we're slicing from from the 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 uh, the three items. So um, zero, one, and two are not there. Three is included all the way out to the end. Uh, negative indices slice from the uh, from the from the from the other end. So uh, this is four from the right. Three six zero oh, one. And and uh, as as you mentioned, a step can also be used after a second colon to take every other element. So so this is the step format. Yes. Yes. Just, 
Mm -hmm. So here is saying, um, give me everything, the rule, and yeah, the step format, exactly. So here you can see, start from the beginning, go to the end, because we didn't put anything, but you just take as of two. Mm -hmm. uh, last comment on lists, they notes uh, uh, a clever use of this step is to stick a negative one in there and you can reverse the whole list. Uh, there's a lot more to lists, uh, list methods, and and in the uh, in my case of VS Code, I uh, can see a, a whole lot of other things that that we didn't we didn't touch on in detail here. Let's move on then to dictionaries. Um, these are unordered collections of key value pairs. So um, it, it reminds me a bit of a, a, a JSON where we've got the name of an item and its value, the, the name of another item and its value, the name of an item and its value. Um, there's, there's no index value here. So there's, there's only one A allowed. Uh, there's, there's, there's only one B allowed. Um, so the, the, the keys have to be unique. Um, they can be changed though. We, we will walk through here how to, how to change B in a moment. And to create a dictionary, we use the curly braces. Um, they note here that to, to create a dictionary, the, generally the format is, is the, 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 the name of the value colon and, and it's, its value comma, and then the name of the second key value pair. Um, it's possible to access insert or, or set elements. So for this D1 item um, to set, um, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> so now that D1 is a dictionary, we're, we're saying the, 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 the key seven here has the value of an integer. So we have keys labeled A, B and seven. And as before, we can use in to, to look for, um, in this case, we've got a key that, that is a B, so it's true. Dictionaries have uh, del and pop methods. Uh, del will remove that seven key value pair. So del D17 takes away this item, so D1 is just A and B again. Um, as, as we did with lists, we can also do a pop and, and take out A, or, or pull out A, so this extracts A. So popping that gives you just A and, and B is gone. There's a couple methods associated with dictionaries. You can, you can uh, get the keys, all the keys that are in D1, or get all the values that are in D1 with these two methods. There's also this handy items method where, where it'll list uh, essentially the whole dict, so the items, the keys, and the values. Uh, looks like I messed something up here. I'm gonna have to look into uh, merging one dictionary into another. Make a note here. Hmm. And you can create dictionaries from sequences. So this is a list with these numbers. Um, I wonder what I did here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna do something on the fly here. Go down to dictionaries. Uh, 
functions. Dictionaries. Del pop keys values. Oh, yep, I have a space in there. So We're re-rendering this on the fly. How's that for doing stuff live? There we go. Jim, how do you find Quattro? Um, go to, <laughs> to quarto.org. Um, the, the instructions for downloading Quarto are, are excellent. Okay, cool. um, and, that, and there's a simple plugin for VS Code, um, but it also can be made to work with Jupyter Notebooks and our studio. And, and I'm just thrilled to be using it. This is this is nice. Very nice. Good. Good. Um, Sorry, one question. How do you get it integrated into? So you're rendering the the note the the notebook, and how are you getting it into the into the Python for data analysis book? Right. Right. Um, I, I think I understand your question. So so I've I've um, I've got this QMD documents. Maybe maybe I should share here I, I believe or maybe he's missing the book club guide that has been prepared in qmd he wasn't yeah. here i think the our last oh, session okay it's a good 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 point so over in um um in our here i'll pull this over in our book club in the top there is a there is a repo mm -hmm. um and it, the text is kind of small. I'm sorry, but back back in our book club near the pinned things, we have a GitHub repo. And um, what I've done, I, I, I forked the repo into MySpace, um, done some work on this file. Uh, my intention after this conversation, uh, when the video is available, is to stick um, my, my chapter three and the, and the video page um, uh, I'll, I'll get them pushed back to uh, my own fork, mm -hmm. and then I'll do a pull request so that uh, John can review my request and add them to the pages of the book. Okay, yeah. Um, it's a good question though. And, and ultimately I think, so I, I have changed, I, I created a notes file. I, in, the, in the header YAML, I had to add uh, one little line here, so my page renders with the whole book. Um, so in any case, I, I I was able to with that add-in in VS Code, I I get this this uh, this wonderful little render button. All right, we'll go back to the book here. And um, I think it's also good if you can watch our first session where Isabel explained how the Quattro book club session, um, style works. Um, I think that would be useful as well. Okay, thank you. Um, I, th I think Shem, you did yours in uh, in Jupiter, right? That is that yeah, correct? Yeah, I yep. did mine in Jupiter, but I haven't even merged it with the uh, the note. But they are all <laughs> they they will all works. Um, I didn't even know like because. Uh, Isabel, the other time, uh, John didn't uh, approve the merge the stuff. So uh, maybe uh, today I will merge it with the um, with the with this book. I will just fork it as well and merge it together and send it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
we'll we'll have both our merges in yet this week. It, I think I yeah. think it'll work just fine. Right. Thank you. Okay. So um, just continuing on in dictionaries, there are um, a, certain kinds of key types um, that um, uh, are allowed. Uh, they mention this concept. Wes mentions this concept of hashability that um, the, the keys themselves um, are, are often some sort of scalar letter or number or a, a tuple um, so that uh, it can be hashed in memory. Um, it's possible to use a list as a key, uh, but, but it's, it's preferable if, if your key has to be a list to make it a tuple, which can be hashed as long as its elements can be. So here's a, uh, a dictionary where a, 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 a tuple now is the key and the value in that pair is, is, uh, is five. It's like my graphic for set isn't coming through either. So I've got a couple things to fix. Um, so, so like lists and tuples and dictionaries, there are sets. Um, they're created with, um, uh, also with curly braces. Um, sets support mathematical operations. Um, and this is a, maybe a foreshadowing for what we'll get into in um, say pandas or other things, but sets support unions, intersections, differences, and symmetric differences. So um, with these sets, uh, there is, there's a method, you hit period and, and hit tab, you can get A uh, as a union with B. Um, it's interesting, this is also A union with B with the pipe. Um, putting on my R brain, this, this is A or B and it gets everything in both, um, but only once. So this is distinct, it, it does not repeat. So three, four, five is in all of them and it, it only puts one version of three, four, five. So it's a, it's a little bit like a left join, I suppose, or a, um, or an inner join. The and operator or intersection method. Um, in in this case, it's it, it's the inner join between these two. It's three, four, five exists in both sets. So intersection B or A intersect B gives three, four, five. I thought maybe we'd be short on time. It looks like that's the case, but there is in the book a pretty good table of common set methods that that resemble um, the sorts of um, things you do with um, joins elsewhere or or um, um, you know operators on comparing uh, two 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 sets of 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 information. Um, he notes all the logical set operations have in-place counterparts, which enable you to replace the contents of the thing on the left with the result. Um, and, and in that table of set methods, they have either the, the method notation or these um, interesting little, um, looks like operators that yield. Um, so here in, in this case, I've got an item C that, that uh, well, in this case, uh, B has been um, uh, 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 unioned with a copy of A. In this case, uh, D, it's, it's B that has been intersected with, with uh, a copy of A, and we get three, four, five back. Um, Wes says uh, set elements must generally be immutable and they must be hashable again. Um, sets can be converted to tuples and you can also check if a set itself is a subset or a superset of another set. Um, there's this nice little method, is subset a set <laughs> or is superset of, of a set? Okay, so those are the four, um, say, 
data structure items in um, in in essentially in the in the core Python and the underlying Python and and the way to manipulate them. Um, um, thinking about other ways of manipulating, um, there's a, a there are built-in functions uh, related to sequences. If if uh, the, think of having to operate over uh, loops or while something's true, um, so there there is a, there's a way to use enumerate to return a sequence of of tuples. Um, there's also a sorted method to return a, a sorted list. This one's interesting. A zip pairs up the elements of a number of lists or tuples or other sequences to create a list of tuples. Uh, so in this case, a, a zipped item is this sequence and then this sequence and, and shown as a list. Foo is matched with, with one, bar is matched with two, and as with, it's matched with it matched with three in this in this new list. Um, zip's nice because it can take an arbitrary number of sequences, and the number of elements it produces is determined only by the shortest sequence. Um, this is the opposite of a R data frame where it would repeat the shortest sequence to to fill out the full data frame. So, in in this case. If sequence three just has two elements and we we zip a three element and a three element and a two element, um, um, well, and in fact, these were, yeah, these are lists. So a list, a list, and a list, but they are three elements, three elements, and two elements. When you when you zip them, you only get two elements because fault faults true only fills out this many there's there's uh because the third one's missing you don't get baz and three um Wes says a common use of zip is simultaneously iterating over multiple sequences and and even combining with the numerate above so so here we go for for an index a and b in enumerate and Zipping those two sequences, print the 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 indexed A and B. So in this case, we we get this nice little output. There's also a reverse method to um, recall this. This uh, is a, a a a list of of uh, numbers from zero to nine, and any for reverse zero to nine and I'll put that as a list, you get nine down to zero. Uh, 15 minutes. Okay, I'll move a little faster here. Sorry, I'm going a little slow. Um, they, they talk here about comprehension. So for all of those, um, well, for list sets and dictionaries, there are these uh, um, situations where you would say, you know, you've got an expression, the, for a value in a collection, if a condition. So this this sort of pattern is a is a comprehension. Uh, you know, as an example, if you're given a list of strings and you want to filter out strings with two or less, um, and then convert them to uppercase, um, you can say in this comprehension in brackets um, that. Um, your your item X becomes uppercase for X in strings, which is here, if the length of X is greater than two, and and so what it's done for for each um, for each X in strings for each word in strings uh, is is converted the ones longer than two into all capitals. Just kind of elegant, I think. Um, that's for a list comprehension, obviously. Uh, dictionary comprehension um, happens inside of brackets, uh, but looks kind of the same that uh, key value expression for value and collection if condition. So for example, if, if you wanted 
the lengths of the strings for each of the items in strings. Um, you can get the length of the words that were above. You could even create a lookup map to get their locations in the list, which is kind of neat. Um, so, so the item A is in the zero position, as is in one position, bat is in the two position with, with this comprehension. There is such a thing as nested list comprehensions. Um, and in, in this list, I, I guess the, the magic's happening here where all data is this list of names. And again, we're looking for names with more than two, with, with two or more A's in them. Like Natalia has three A's, so that should print out. And, and so in, in this list comprehension, it, it, uh, it prints the name uh, for the, and indexes on name in all data. Um, they've got a method here to flatten the list of tuples into a simple list of in integers. So these tuples in, in parentheses, there's one, two, and three. You, you can flatten that structure into, uh, it's actually a list, a long list. Um, moving quickly, 10 minutes. Okay, functions are super important, just like they are in R. Um, they use the def keyword in Python. Um, there are um, positional arguments and keyword arguments. The positional ones have to come first. So uh, X and Y are in their positions. Um, keyword arguments, um, well, this Z argument has is equal to 1.5. Um, so here I've, I've created my own function. I called it my function. I put in four and 25 and it comes back with four plus 25 is 29 times 1.5 to give 43.5. So yeah, keyword arguments must follow the positional arguments in Python. Uh, Python like R, most languages has this concept of namespaces. And so the, the variables inside the function um, don't necessarily exist in the global environment. Um, in this case, for example, we've, we've created A in the global environment and we've, we've appended A with the numbers zero through four. Um, What's well, kind of fun here, so I, I ran this defined function once, and then a second time I printed A, and it's interesting, it, it adds zero through four, and so every time I run function, it, it adds zero through four, because in this case, A is, is still in the global environment. Um, in Python, you can return um, lots of values, um, unlike C or, or some other things. Um, um, and it and has a way of uh, unpacking the result variable. So if I define a function, in fact, within the function, I'm, I'm just assigning the values, which isn't particularly useful. But if I return those values, um, I, I can say A, B, and C outside of the function equals F, which is returning A, B, and C, and A is, is five from inside the function. Um, most everything in Python is an object, and, and the, the, the functions we create are no different. Here's a case where we're, we're cleaning some um, uh, text with, with a bunch of problems. And we're actually importing a little different package here. Um, we've defined a function called clean strings that are going to uh, take out punctuation and make them title case and, 
and um, strip some things out. And when I run the function on the strings, I get something that's not too bad. Another approach to, to doing this function though, is to um, uh, define one function called remove punctuation and, and then make this uh, clean ops, which is a, a, a series of functions. And then what I'm going to do is define another function called clean strings. I'll feed it strings and the ops. And so for, for every one of those strings and for every one of the functions in ops, the value equals the, the function of the value. It, it ends up <laughs> by feeding it the states, the text from up above and the three different cleaning operations. Um, so I can iterate over both the list of strings and the list of operations. Uh, Python also has a built-in map function, uh, which is a little, it's a little bit like per, where you can map over uh, a function and the states and print them out, which is kind of fun. Um, Lambda functions or anonymous functions also exist where the, the, uh, the, the function you're running doesn't have to be named and written out with a definition. It could just be put here um, to do a Lambda function, use the word Lambda, and then the, the um, uh, uh, colon. Um, there's more to be said about Lambda functions, but we just have five minutes left. Um, real quickly, generators. Um, these are ways of um, doing loops over lots of items. Um, they, they mention here this, this for loop as an example to print the keys. Um, so a, a generator is a convenient way to construct a, a new iterable object from, from a list or from a, one of those data structures up above. Um, in this case, um, we could define a function and um, for, for every one of these numbers, um, we'll, we'll square them between one and 10. Right. Squares runs that functions from one to 10. We, we could put squares and put some other number there to get it to run from one to any other number. Um, Wes makes a comment here, since generators put output one element at a, at a time, instead of putting the whole list in memory, uh, it, it can help your program use less memory overall. So uh, that was a generator, um, but there's also a comprehension analog to a, to a generator where we'd enclose it um, with parentheses instead of brackets. Um, it's interesting to me that um, when you look at this generator item, it, it shows as an object with a sort of a hash, but you can use that gen operator um, in fact, we're going to repeat this um, there as uh, as part of this sum, and it will it will walk through that math one by one by one and sum all the elements to give a sum. Uh, but you can do the same thing to create a, a a dictionary of every one of those. Three minutes. Um, <laughs> Okay, real quick, there's a iter, to, iter tools module, which allows uh, summing or doing operations as group buys here out in base uh, Python or with the iter, to, iter tools package. Like uh, in this case, a function to get names by first letter. Um, some comments about exception handling, you know, gracefully returning um, values. So if you, if you throw, text into a function that is meant to return a number, it, it should return something that's expected. Um, they have these exceptions for 
value error or type error, which, which helps you avoid this mess. Uh, in fact, you can accept both value error and type errors to get um, your functions to work. Um, there's also uh, finally where where if it if it if it uh, you know whether or not the code will succeed, it finally says exit this way. Um, IPython's got a little different exceptions uh, when you're running. The type of error you get is different uh, when you run a full script, um, but it's a little more useful. Um, because you get more of a, a call uh, stack trace. One minute. Okay. Um, last couple things in the operating system. Um, he only mentions in this chapter the the open method and how to read the lines from from any text file. Um, he encourages us to close a file after we open them. The the methods for the files we've read on F. Um, there's a read method, a seek, and a tell method uh, to see the characters in the file. Um, after you've read, tell tells you what position you are in the file, and, and seek changes the file position to the indicated byte. All right, I got down to the end of the chapter um, with like 30 seconds left. How how'd I do? Is it is this all right? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jim. That's yeah, great job. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. That was great. Yeah. I'll, thank you. <laughs> I, I've got a I've got a couple things to fix. I'll look for the YouTube video and I'll have this um uh the pull request up up for John shortly so that next week if if somebody wants to steal whatever they want, they can they can have it. Right. Thank you very much, Jim. And I think next week we're gonna have um is it um is some L I U doing? Yeah, it gets me. Okay. All right. Um happy to have you next week for the numpy, I guess, right? Yeah, numpy. Okay, cool. Um so thank you very much, Jim, for taking this and um really appreciate it. Thank you all, Ron, for joining and uh, Karim for joining too. Um we we'll see you next week. Um yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye. See you next week. Hey.